welcome. My name is Narayana Montufar, an artist, astrologer, and author who finds inspiration in the symbolic language of astrology. Today, I am here to walk you through the most important planetary alignments of 2024. And it is an exciting year that will continue a lot of the change that we experienced already in 2023. In many ways, 2023 was a pivotal year that was going to initiate us into alignments that are going to last for a really long time. And so it is really important to know at an energetic level that we are literally anchoring the age of Aquarius this year. And why do I think we are in the age of Aquarius? I do think we are. We have been for some time now since the Mayan calendar ended. And the re main reason why is because on the spring equinox in Egypt, the constellation that rises is Aquarius. Some astrologers don't, don't agree with that. I am one of the astrologers that believes we are in the age of Aquarius. And so let's think about that archetype of Aquarius first. I have some slides for you, but I want to open with that because it sets the foundation of the entire astrology in 2024. Aquarius is the archetype of the water bearer. It is ruled by Saturn as well as Uranus. I use both rulerships as I don't consider myself a traditional or, or a modern astrologer. I use both techniques and I use both rulerships. And the way I see Aquarius with those two ruler, rulerships of Saturn and Uranus, I always see Aquarius as the archetype of the change maker with one foot in the past, Saturn, and one foot in the future, Uranus. This is massive. This is massive because we, even though we have been technically in the age of Aquarius since 2012, when the Mayan calendar ended, we have been waiting for that archetype to be anchored onto Earth, onto our planet. And if you look back at some of the major alignments that happened in the past years, they function as an anchoring of the age of Aquarius. For example, I am thinking about the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn that initiated us, well, first ended the 200 years of materialism that have, has prevailed in, in society and it's initiating us into 200 years of the air element. Mm -hmm. So we're moving from earth to air. And this conjunction happened exactly on the winter solstice in on 2020. That conjunction marked the major arrival of Aquarian energy here on earth. Then in 2021, we had Saturn and Uranus, again, the rulers of Aquarius, squaring throughout the year. I think it was three squares. The tension was massive. And we, especially fixed signs, felt it the most. So, again, Aquarian energy. And then, in 2023, we had Pluto starting to transition between Capricorn to Aquarius because Pluto is the last planet in our solar system, at least that we can see or that science has uh, identified. Pluto moves really slowly. And so Pluto doesn't really change signs very often. Pluto remained in Capricorn for the last 15 years. And so its entrance into Aquarius has been gradual. And that is the reason why there's so much change at a collective level. In 2024, 
Pluto is going to enter Aquarius again in January, actually, and it's going to remain in Aquarius for most of the year. It only has one last detour in Capricorn, which is in September and October. So basically, it is in 2024 when we get to truly feel what the planet of transformation, collective shadow, radical change is going to bring in the sign of the future. Have you noticed that time is accelerating? I don't know about you, but I have felt that. I have felt that time has been accelerating more and more and more. And as the planet of transformation, Pluto, enters Aquarius and is going for, for staying there for the next 20 years, longer than it was in Capricorn, Pluto has an irregular orbit. Mm -hmm. So this shift is incredibly meaningful. At a personal level, if you have any planets in the fixed signs, so Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, you will have a Pluto transit and it's going to change your life, hopefully for the better. You need to understand that you will be challenged to embrace a deep transformation. You will be challenged to harness the shaman within. Mm -hmm. So think about the Scorpio archetype of the Phoenix rising after a period of deep transformation. At a collective level, just to give you an example of what Pluto in Aquarius meant in 2023, we saw the big rise of AI. Even though AI has been a thing for many years, in 2023 was the year that really brought it up to the surface. And, and, and Pluto wasn't totally even in Aquarius yet. So all of those technologies like AI, robotics, space exploration, um, even more complex technologies are going to surface over the next 20 years. We're also going to see a sense of rebellion and a deep need for freedom ripple through the collective. And we will see a lot of different countries having major changes to their governments because at the end of the day, Pluto rules plutocracy and people in power as well. And so if you think about this, it sounds disruptive and it will be because it needs to happen. Pluto in Aquarius is literally the epitome of power to the people. And you can see this by going back in history. For example, no one alive has experienced Pluto in Aquarius because the last time it happened was when the French Revolution occurred, which disseminated all over the world. And back then you didn't even have the technology we have now. And so we astrologers are predicting that there will be an uprising at a world, at a world level and in many different countries because people are tired of the, their governments. And in a way that is what needs to happen. And the reason why I'm starting with Pluto when I'm talking to you about the astrology of 2024 is because it, would, it will color everything else. Mm -hmm. Pluto's orbit contains the orbits of all the other planets. And so Pluto, at the end of the day, in my opinion, has the upper hand. Mm -hmm. And so now that is laying the foundation of the astrological transits of 2024 and that's why i'm beginning with that you are going to start feeling pluto very immediately because we are entering 2024 obviously during capricorn season and at the end of capricorn season we're going to have this activation of pluto moving into aquarius exactly when the sun enters aquarius mm -hmm. so this is going to be pretty fast. We, we're we're going to see, even though Pluto is a slow moving planet, we are going to feel its effects at a collective level very early in the year. Mm -hmm. And so this is a completely new era for humanity. The age of Aquarius has incredible meaning 
and it has been awaited by mystics, new agers, astrologers um, all over the world. This is thought to be the, the age of light in which the earth is passing through the photon band. And this is a very, very rare alignment. The photon band, is it's, it's kind of complicated to explain, but think about the ages. Mm -hmm. The photon band of light, which is like higher vibrations, higher energetic vibrations, only occurred during the age of Leo, which was when the pyramids of Giza were built, just to give you an example. And now, as the earth enters deeper and deeper into the age of Aquarius. And so this is known to be the age of light. There is a big sense of higher individuality, of freedom, of everyone working towards a higher sense of freedom from government, from society, from all of that. But in order to arrive to that point, we're going to have to see the structures of our society collapse, which is something that already begun um, in 2023. And so the age of Aquarius is a massively important rise in consciousness. And as you see, so many people have jumped into the spiritual wagon. More and more people are meditating. More and more and people, more and more people are talking about aliens. Aquarius is the sign of, of, of aliens. More and more people are talking about the non-tangible side of life. We're starting to believe more and more that there's so much more than to just what we can touch. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that we can see. And so a lot of us are developing our connection to the cosmos and our connection to the non-tangible side of life. And I think that 2024 is going to bring huge advancement in that area and so now i am going through the slides here and so if you want to take notes you can um pluto is going to stay in aquarius for most of the year like i was saying it only dips into capricorn in september and november and so those months will be very intense because we're gonna see an ending or a conclusion or basically the end of a story that the, that developed over the last 15 years. And so this is massive. We're unplugging from so much materialism of, of the shadow side of the earth element to hopefully, hopefully going to the highest vibration of the air element, which is thinking, which is elevating our minds to places where they have not been before. So Pluto in Aquarius colors the entire astrology of 2024. The other signature that I consider very important for us to talk about is the co-presence of Saturn and Neptune in, in Pisces. Mm -hmm. Neptune has been in Pisces for a long time. It's actually getting to the end of Pisces. And... Even though Saturn is not going to form a conjunction with Neptune yet this year, it's coming later. The fact that they're in the same sign can feel really confusing for us Earthlings, okay? Why? Because Saturn rules structure, responsibility, um, form. Think about Saturn as the builder. The You know, Saturn rules the bones in your body, so... It is what creates structure in our lives. It also relates to authority figures like bosses and the government as well. We're talking about bureaucracy. That's what Saturn rules. And Neptune is the complete opposite. It is dissolution, um, formlessness, like no form. It rules oceans. And so we have two very encountered energies here in the same sign of the zodiac. And this is what's going to be a little bit difficult for us to to manage because in the area ruled by Pisces in our charts, it's we might feel like we're building something, we're creating something, we're we're giving birth to a structure 
only for it to dissolve <laughs> later on. So we're going to have this duality of, of, of up and down, black and white, good and bad. We're, I mean, duality already is a concept in the universe, but because Pisces is especially very dual, right? The it, it, is, it is represented by the fish, one going up, one going down. It's really important for us to not get down on ourselves if some of the things that we build this year all of a sudden just dissolve. That is going to happen. And, and we just need to trust that whenever something gets dissolved from our lives, it wasn't meant to be. It was not meant to be. And so that is going to affect those of us that have planets in the mutable signs. So Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, especially if you have any planets in the, in the middle degrees or you were born in the middle of Gemini season, Virgo season, Sagittarius season, and Pisces season. So this is something really important to keep in mind. The next thing I want to talk about is the conjunction of the lunar north node of the moon and Chiron. This is an incredibly important conjunction because it does not happen very often. If you're familiar with the lunar node, the north node, which also has a south node, obviously, um, the node is a point in the sky. It is not a planet. It is basically the point in which the sun and the moon cross. So it creates eclipses. Mm -hmm. The north node is often described as the mouth of the dragon that is hungry and he just wants to eat the energy of the sign where it is in. Mm -hmm. The Nord Node is in Aries. It entered Aries um, in the summer and it's going to remain in Aries throughout all of 2024. And during that time, it's going to conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, between January and May 15th exact on February 18th. This is incredibly important in terms of dealing with our wounds. 2024 is a year during which the more you heal, the more you seek to heal your trauma or anything that is keeping you from stepping into being the leader of your own life is going to help you immensely. Mm -hmm. the, and especially at the beginning of the year. So the, we're talking about from January to May. And so we are healing the masculine because Mars is, Mars is ruling this conjunction. And so we're, we're in a process of healing the masculine. And, that collect, and at a collective level, this is not super easy. Remember, Chiron relates to the wound. It relates to that sore spot. And in this case, at a collective level, we're talking about masculinity, mm -hmm. toxic masculinity and all that, that it's in all of us. It's not only just men. Mm -hmm. We're all being held accountable for healing this part of ourselves. And so the more we heal this at a personal level, look at where Aries is in your chart and focus on healing that part of your chart. And you will create healing for society and for the world as well. In 2023, we experienced something similar also at the beginning of the year when Jupiter was in Aries. So look back to what transpired for you in terms of relationships, in terms of leadership, of your masculine energy, of, of how you chase what you want. And look back at what transpired for you in the first months of 2023 and something not exactly the same but very similar could come up for you during the first months of 2024. At the end of the day, Chiron is an incredibly important archetype to work with. In my experience and as an astrologer and in my own healing journey, Chiron has been crucial to pay attention to because it helps you realize what's your deep wound. And once you know, you can overcome it. 
<clears throat> the next transit I want to talk about is the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus. And there are many different points of views uh, about this conjunction. Some astrologers are predicting that it will be good, that it will be positive. Some astrologers think it will be really intense because it is active between mid-March to mid-May, but it is exact on April 20th. The thing about this conjunction is that Jupiter uh, will play its role as the magnifier, as the expander mm -hmm, of Uranus. Uranus has been in Taurus since 2018 doing the work of liberating, doing the work of changing the economy, doing the work of cleaning the earth, all of those, th that, those things that relate to Taurus, mm -hmm, to the earth element. Jupiter is going to magnify that. It's going to magnify Uranus and Uranus will also Aquarius. See, we, we, we keep on going to the Aquarian archetype because Uranus is one of the planets that is going to do more things this year. Mm -hmm. um, you know this. You've lived this really extremely well. You've gotten to know Uranus at a very deep level. If you have planets in Taurus, Leo, Scorpio or Aquarius. There are big chances you've experienced massive upheaval in your life. A lot of things just changing, ending, and just accelerated change. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you've been, you've been going with it. You've been embracing that change because that's, that's the only way to work with Uranus, to embrace the energy of liberation, freedom, kundalini energy, thinking about a higher power, connecting to a higher power. That's what Uranus is. It's not just unexpected change. Uranus has a good side. Mm -hmm. It is the planet of genius. It is the, it is the highest vibration of that. G the genius, the maverick, taking risks. And so Jupiter is going to magnify that. Mm -hmm. And this is an energy that can be very black and white. There are no in-betweens. Mm -hmm. The highest vibration of this conjunction is breakthroughs, having major breakthroughs, aha moments, ideas, ideas that no one else can think about, ideas that are exciting, that are exhilarating. That is the highest vibration. But in order to do that, you have to be able to channel kundalini energy through your body. Because as one of my favorite astrologers says, both Chiron and Uranus relate to kundalini energy in the body. And so that's why meditation is super important. If you're able to sit down and take that energy from the lower chakras to the upper chakras, you can connect to this genius breakthrough amazing liberating energy of Uranus. If you're unable to do that, mm -hmm, you might have a breakdown during this time. Mm -hmm. It is that simple between March, May, um, mid-March and mid-May. Mm -hmm. It will be incredibly important to ground and, and luckily we have Taurus. This conjunction is happening in Taurus. Mm -hmm. So we are able to ground the energy so it doesn't <sighs> drive us a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. I will talk a little bit more about what can the world expect in, on another video, but I think this conjunction will also affect the environment. Mm -hmm. It will probably affect agriculture, um, the stock market, and we will see what it happens. But hopefully, hopefully these, these, these shifts are for the better. The last time this conjunction happened in Taurus was in 1941. And it was when women received uh, or starting or started to receive equal pay. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I read from Jessica Adams, an astrologer I follow. But follow those innovative vibes and you will succeed with this conjunction. That won't happen again for another 14 years and definitely not in Taurus. 
So after Jupiter conjunct magnifies Uranus, it's going to enter Gemini on May 25th. And so this is good news for the mutable signs. This is good news for Gemini, um, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Virgo. Mm -hmm. The thing to remember is that Jupiter doesn't necessarily like to be in Gemini because Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is the opposite sign. However, Jupiter is still Jupiter. So we are going to see a resurgence of the media, perhaps. As you know, media, for example, magazines and journalism has been changing tremendously in the past couple of years. And so those foundations have been collapsing in a way. And so we are might see a another way, right? That media is, is going in a different direction um, on a personal level. This is really good if you want to launch your podcast, start writing that book, or go back to school. Mm -hmm. Because Ju Jupiter magnifies everything that it touches. And in this case, it's going to magnify words. It's going to magnify conversations and, and uh, uh, connections of the mind. And so if you have any planets in Gemini, mm -hmm, you're going to receive that expansive energy. You're going to receive all of that ability to stick to the words, to, to, to your words, to open your throat chakra. Mm -hmm. and, and let's be real. That's what we need. A lot of us are working with a blocked throat chakra. And so speaking, talking, podcasting, connecting, getting in touch with people, that is going to be really, really good for us. It's going to help us in everything, in our work, in our relationships, all the way from uh, late May of 2024 to late May of 2025. Mm -hmm. Jupiter will square Saturn in, in August. I think it's August 19th and then another time in December. So do expect some contraction to happen after the, that expansion, but that is not a call to abandon write, writing your book or filming your podcast, right? It is a call to stick with it, putting in the work and not give up because you don't want to give up with Saturn. Mm -hmm. The next transit I want to talk about is the sextile that Uranus is going to form with Neptune. Mm -hmm. And I think this truly, truly elevates the Aquarian energy. Why? Because again, Uranus rules Aquarius especially now these days. Um, I really love this and this is happening at the second time of, second part of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I really love this for intuition work, for psychic abilities, for creativity. This doesn't happen very often that these planets form a sextile. And in a way we experienced this a little bit in 2023 towards the end. But there were too many other aspects that were like counterbalancing that. It was just not truly talked about and it wasn't really truly felt because sextiles are a little weaker, right, than trines. But I really feel like because a lot of us are elevating our consciousness and are doing intuitive work and spiritual work, this sextile can be really positive for dream work, for working with the Akashic Records, for getting in touch with our loved ones that are not on this plane anymore. It can really take us far in that type of work. Then Uranus is also going to try in Pluto. So you have the three outer planets here working together in 2024. You have Uranus forming a sextile with Neptune, intuition, dreams. You have Uranus forming a trine with Pluto, change. I'm going to talk about this a little deeper. And you have Pluto doing big moves, making big moves. So you have the three outer planets working together. They're not squaring. They are, they are creating nice conversations with one another. This is meaningful. We are creating a new reality. We are creating a new society and we're also starting to walk our own personal path towards 
more authenticity. So 2024 is the year to unplug from the matrix, to quit your corporate job, to launch your business, to really do something that makes you happy. It will be a fantastic year to learn astrology, for example. And so the trine that Uranus is going to form with Pluto is also in the second part of the year. And this is just the beginning of this, of this transit, actually, because eventually, because of the retrograde, mm -hmm, and because eventually, uh, I mean, Pluto is going to get deeper and deeper into Aquarius, and, and Uranus is going to move into Gemini in the next few years. And so this is only kind of like a little taste of a period of collective massive change that we will continue to experience in the next few years. And so even though it is a trine, whenever uh, Uranus and Pluto trine, there are a lot of technological advancements. Again, there, there is a lot of creativity, art taking place, and all of that changing because they are going to need, they're, they're, this, this, this trine kind of starts and it goes away, but it's going to take us into the next few years. So pay attention to, to the area of your charts in the, in the early degrees of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And that is going to plant the seed of something that's going to develop over the next few years. And that's it. That's it for this video. Thank you for being here. I am new to YouTube. This is like my first astrology video, so I'm hoping to, to do more. But if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And as a friendly reminder, I am also offering readings. I offer astrology readings, tarot readings. I can do them over video, over Zoom, or in person, in case you're in the Bay Area. And I also offer Akashic Records readings as well as birth chart paintings. And so thank you for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.